So I was trying to figure out what would be the most unreasonable way to start this video. And I decided to show you guys my roof. What's good, fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're announcing an all new iPad Pro. I'm super excited to let you guys know that I got early access to the new iPad Pro that was announced last week. After playing with it for the past couple days, I wanted to create a video that was more focused towards the video slash photo content creators. Quick disclaimer, I wouldn't consider this a full on tech review, but throughout the video I'll go over some specs and features that I thought would be cool to share with you guys. I do however go over a brief editing workflow with iMovie and Adobe Rush on the iPad. It's going to push what you can do on iPad or on any computer even further. I want to give you all my impressions as a creator, more so as a video creator. All right. All right, so I was trying to figure out what would be like the most unreasonable location to start this video. Um, yeah, welcome to New York. But before that, let's uh, roll out some B-roll. Another interesting fact that I wanted to point out was that I'm actually shooting in 4K right now. So can the iPad actually handle 4K footage? We're gonna, we're gonna find out. For today's video, I wanted to show you guys how the iPad Pro performed as a video creator slash video editor. I wanted to completely take out my laptop and see if I'm actually able to create a video straight from my camera to the iPad. Uh, so this would be suited for entry level filmmakers, entry level videographers who only have access to an iPad and I'm always about being resourceful and I know not everybody could afford a super maxed out laptop. So hopefully with this new iPad that's coming out, it'll convince you to purchase it for these video creation needs. Now for the specs. I don't want to tell you things you already know, so I'll make this quick. The version you'll see throughout this video is the 11 inch version starting at $7.99. You can also get the larger display at 12.9 inches, but I think that's really unnecessary. Next option is storage. I always tell people to invest in what you're going to produce, so if you think you're going to create a lot, spend more. You need that room for growth. If you're working on the budget, get the base model and just make it work. The new Apple Pencil retails at $130 and it now sticks to the side. I only wish there were video gestures for applications like iMovie or Rush. There's one USB-C port and they completely took out the headphone jack. Yep, a 12 megapixel camera which is great for photos and 4K video. That's right, 4K 60 frames to be exact. I'm low key jealous because some of my cameras can't even shoot 4K 60 frames. Just don't be that person who's at an event with your iPad ruining the view for everyone else. That's actually a pretty serious thing. It weighs a little over a pound and you get up to 10 hours of battery life, depending on how much you use it of course. And there's a brand new liquid retina display that goes from edge to edge. They've also added a face ID and I'm not actually using it right now, I'm just recording myself. So now let's get into the fun part, the video editing software. Probably my favorite part of this video. So, so just say you just bought your iPad, it comes with iMovie, and Adobe Premiere Rush actually, you could download it from the App Store um, using Test Flight. And it's still actually in this beta form. So what I'm gonna show you guys isn't actually an, an official uh, editing session, but this is just going to show you guys how powerful the iPad Pro actually is. But before we get into that, I wanted to cover something that I thought would be a really cool idea, um, but obviously wouldn't work is trying to figure out if this solid state drive could actually plug into the iPad Pro because this is a one terabyte product um, and one terabyte is plenty of footage especially if you're shooting you know on your phone or on your iPad and you're just editing that content but what if you're shooting like 4k footage like for me today earlier shooting on the roof that's all 4k footage what if I wanted to put all those video files onto my iPad 
I can imagine after like two or three projects that would probably fill up fairly quick. So I don't know. Let's try it out. See if it works. And I know the answer to this already, but I thought I'd just show you guys as an example. Um, and it doesn't work. Content not available. Cannot read the connected storage media. And unfortunately, Apple hasn't made it to where you could connect uh, an external solid state drive to your iPad to work off of. Anywho, diving into uh, working on the iPad Pro to create video, I'm going to go over my video importing process. I'm not going to edit the whole video with you guys, but I'm going to edit a portion of the video so you guys can see exactly how much control and how hands-on the iPad Pro is with video editing software. So right now, I'm just plugging in this card reader from some of the content we shot earlier today. Changes the video a lot. All right, so I'm just going to import some of these video clips. So these are all the product shots that Jalen helped me shoot earlier. I'm going to import these as an example. All right, so I just imported the footage from my camera and Jalen's camera. And we also shot some content on the iPad and I'm going to edit two different sequences on two different software. So just to show you guys the difference between the two and which one you think will best fit your editing needs. Uh, so the first one I'm going to get into is actually iMovie. iMovie is a video editing software I've been using since high school. So I'm very pleased to see that it's actually translated over to the iPad. And something I wish that the iPad had was actually Final Cut. And I wish that Final Cut could actually run on both the iPad and the MacBook. Because Adobe has created that ecosystem of having Adobe Premiere and they just launched their product, um, Adobe Premiere Rush which is like a condensed version, very similar to iMovie. So just getting going into iMovie, I'm going to create a new project. Um, we're going to create a new movie. And for this camera sequence that we're going to create, it's just going to be super simple. Uh, a couple of different product shots um, that I shot earlier today. And these shots are pretty much going to have voiceover over them to go over the specs. So all we're going to do is select the clips that we want. And a cool thing about iMovie is that you could click to preview. Uh, just to get an idea of like which clips you want to add to your timeline. And I sort of have an idea of which clips I already want to add. And this is super rough, by the way. Um, and of course, you'll see all the different clips uh, that we shot earlier today, but I just want to focus on these product clips for iMovie. So we have five clips and you notice that you could toggle this right audio signal to show you the wavelengths. And what I'm going to do is first, first I'm going to take off all these transitions um, because I don't want any cuts. I don't want any dissolves in between maybe we'll go in and do that later but let's see where it starts oh and i also want to take off the sound so all i need to do is go to volume just put, click that down and you notice how fast i'm actually scrubbing through uh this was shot at surprisingly it was shot at 4k 24 frames So boom, we got the reveal. And then we're out. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down a little bit, probably here, because it's a little too long. So all I'm going to do is just drag the end and just pretty much place it where I think it should end probably want to stop it right here and notice how easily I'm cutting that down the second clip it's just a close-up of the product take the volume down and it's a rack focus so let's start unfocused first and then focused Awesome. Oh, and it unracks itself. So I think, I think what we could do, we actually have some play here. 
Um, first, I'm just going to drop this volume. And I actually want to cross this off just to show you guys what it looks like. Because because we did a rack focus, let's see what this looks like transitioning. That looks pretty clean to me. So this shot's a little shaky in the beginning. Let's just cut that down a little bit. So you notice here on the top, on this top corner, it tells you how long the clip is. So seven seconds. This next clip is seven seconds. Let's cut this down to seven seconds. So we have some sort of like consistency here. And this one's not long enough, so we don't mind that. Let's just see how this looks again. That looks pretty clean to me. Oh, so we racked, we racked out of focus, so we could actually transition that into this clip. I'm gonna, I'm going to drop this volume down. And notice how it's a little shaky in the beginning. So we're just gonna see how much control you have. All right. So it wants to stop shaking. Right there. Looks about right. Perfect. And like I said, I'm going to be doing a little bit of voiceover over these clips. And we're going to turn this music off because we don't want to get any copyright infringements. And I'm just going to drop this to seven seconds just because I'm a super neat freak. And that's a 6.1. Let's do a six. So let's see how that looks. So shake a little shaky in the beginning. It's probably because I was using a macro lens and putting it on a tripod. But that looks about right. So since our sequence is finished, we actually have a couple more controls that I kind of want to go over real quick. Filters. You could add any filter that you feel like fits. Um, because these are product shots, I feel like they don't actually need filters. And I don't want to get into titles because I feel like I'll take too much time. But this, this just gives you like an overall feel how powerful the iPad Pro is. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit done. And I'm going to export. I'm going to save this. 4K. And let's see how long that takes. All right. So that's fully exported. So what I'm going to do now is just airdrop this completed video uh, to my MacBook Pro and add it to the timeline. And we're good. All right. So going into the second application, real quick, W Rush. And I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to add a couple clips from the iPad. Uh, this was just B-roll that I shot. Uh, this one looks good. And let's do a fifth one. Maybe that one. So you probably noticed that the interface is a little different on Adobe Rush. And you actually have a little more control than iMovie. And this is all dependent on your experience and what controls you actually need. Over here, you have the cutting tool. Over here on the right, uh, you have your transitions tools, text tools, and you can also you can also download some tools from Adobe Stock. But I just briefly wanted to include this into the video just to give you an idea of what it looked like and the current sort of the controls that you had for video. And I don't want to get too in depth. Um, I'll create a video later on just sort of using, I want to shoot a video completely on the iPad and edit it completely on the iPad. Uh, that's going to be a later video and just because we're just highlighting the software and how it's sort of seamlessly playing back 4K footage without buffering, that, that to me is definitely state of the art and, and I'm just super excited to see what people are going to be creating with these products because they are so powerful. I can only imagine if I was like in high school right now and I was working on an iPad Pro, what I would actually do with it as my main engine. Um, but anywho, that sort of wraps up this video. 
So if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed this sort of series I've been doing with Apple products, um, let me know in the comments below any questions or video suggestions that you have in particular that you want me to create for this channel. Definitely add that to the comments and I'll do my best to create videos that sort of tailor towards uh, the up and coming creator or just that creator on a budget because we sort of all used to be there and I still feel like I'm actually there. For me personally, I enjoy learning new software like learning Adobe Rush and like playing with iMovie again. Like these things sort of get me creatively like stimulated and it keeps me inspired. So I'm excited that this video is dropping. I hope you guys are excited um, to be a part of this journey. Yeah, hit the subscribe button if you want to see like more of me and my sort of creative journey with YouTube. Uh, I'm looking to create a lot more content towards this month and towards the end of next month uh, because we're planning on staying in New York for a while, hopefully. And yeah, thank you guys for tuning in.